I'm grateful. How often do you hear that? There's a lot of stuff happening right now in the world. There's a lot of stuff happening in each and every one of our lives that can make us be fearful, can make us be worried, can make us question what's going to happen in life. Right? Headlines don't really tell us that we're grateful. We don't often see newspaper headlines or see television news stories that talk about a good act that was done. Right? In our world, we are bombarded day in and day out with bad things and negativity. Today's lesson, Jesus heals ten lepers. Right? It says ten lepers. Is it actually leprosy that these ten people have? Leprosy as we know it, right? Because if you look up leprosy, go Google leprosy later and, and learn about it. It's actually a really disgusting disease um, where people lose body parts because of um, this disease that they have. But this leprosy that Jesus is healing here may not have actually been leprosy as we know it. It may have just been what we call today eczema or a rash or something along that lines. It may not have been Leprosy. But these ten people had a disease that kept them from being a part of their community. These ten people had a disease that made them be ostracized. These ten people had a disease that would make them live out in the hills and the valleys between these towns. Right? It says that Jesus was traveling to Jerusalem on his way, going between the countries of Samaria and Galilee. Which is actually quite interesting because the, the border for Samaria and Galilee pretty much runs north and south. And if he was in Galilee going to Jerusalem, he had to go north and south. So he didn't have to go between the two. But he chose to. And there he is walking on his way. And he hears these people cry. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Right? Because lepers would have had to say, unclean! Don't come near me, because you might get what I got. That's why they made him leave the town. But they shout out to Jesus, and Jesus doesn't heal them. He doesn't have mercy on them. When they called out for mercy, they could have been asking for money. Bless you. Because... They were living out where with no assistance, out in no man's land. They were out in the hills and the valleys. They had no family to care for them. They had nothing. So when they cry out for mercy, they could have been crying out for him to help them. Give us food. Give us money. Give us something. Jesus says to them, go and show yourselves to a priest. Why? Why? Because the priests had to see them if they were lepers because the, the towns had excommunicated them and threw them out. And the only way for them to be restored to community was to come back, show themselves to a priest and be proclaimed clean. But Jesus says to these ten lepers, go and show yourselves to a priest. And as they went, they were made clean. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And started to praise God with a loud voice. And he prostrated himself at Jesus' feet. What does that mean? He laid down on his face, basically. And what? why did he do that? What is that a position of? Submission. Submission, but what else? I heard something over here. I didn't really hear what it was. Trust. What else? What are we doing right now? Worship. It's a position of worship. He fell prostrate on his face showing that Jesus was God. And he worshipped him. And he thanked him. It's interesting to me, there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of wordplay going on in this lesson here. And there's a lot of stuff happening. <coughs> right? Jesus saw these ten lepers. He told them to go and show themselves to the priests. And as the ten of them went, they saw that they were made clean. Right? They saw they were made clean. 
And then the one saw that he was healed. He went back and he thanked God. You know this word here for thanked in in Luke is only used four times. One time right here in our text. Two times when Jesus sits down with his 12 disciples on the night before he is crucified and has dinner with them. And he lifts the bread and he gives thanks. And he lifts the cup and he gives thanks. The other time we'll talk about in two weeks where there's a a Pharisee standing out in public and he says, I give thanks to you, O God, that I am not like these people. Thanks. The word is Eucharisto. Eucharisto. Which reminds us of what? Those of you that set this up. This is the great thanksgiving, the great Eucharist, the great Eucharisto. He returned and worshipped and thanked Jesus for what he had done. And then Jesus says, is only this foreigner to be found to come back? Because he was a Samaritan. And Samaritan and Jews didn't get along in that day and age. Jews thought that Samaritans were garbage and couldn't be trusted. And Samaritans thought the same of the Jews, that they were garbage and couldn't be trusted. And Jesus says, has only this foreigner returned to give thanks? And here's a little bit on that word foreigner, which I didn't know before until this week. Um, the, this image of Jesus calling the Samaritan a foreigner, this word for foreigners is the only time this word is ever used in all of the Greek New Testament. So it was used, but is being this the only time that the word was ever used in the New Testament. It was used in an inscription over the door of the temple in Jerusalem that read, no foreigner is to enter. The same words were used in the Septuagint and the laws that forbade outsiders from coming near the tabernacle with a penalty of death for those who did. Right? The tabernacle was the, the tent or the box that held the Ark of the Covenant, right? It was the thing that moved around that held God as they, as they moved throughout the wilderness. Isaiah, however, welcomes foreigners. So even if this man had gone to the temple out of one of the ten lepers, he wouldn't have been welcome in the temple to show himself to the priest to begin with. But he is welcome to come and worship at the feet of Jesus and to give Jesus thanks. To give Jesus thanks. What Jesus does for us each and every week. So Jesus sees him, says this foreigner is the only one to come back. And then he says to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Where where did he get faith from? There's no mention of faith before in this. Jesus sees ten lepers. He tells them to go. They notice that they're clean. One of them notices that he's been healed. He goes back to Jesus and gives him thanks. And Jesus says, your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has saved you. The word therefore well is the word that we see in other places that is save. Sozo is the word. It's to be made whole, to be made complete, to be put back into a state of existence as you were before, as God intended for you to be. You've been made complete by coming back and giving thanks to God. Because you see, there's so many things in this world that we could all just hunker down in fear and worry about what's going to happen. There's so many things for us to be fearful of. But if each and every one of us stops for two seconds, we will notice all of the great and wonderful things that we have to be grateful for. David Lose is the president of Philadelphia Seminary, at least for the next eight months, um, at which time he will lose his job um, because of a merger of seminaries. But he writes a weekly article for preachers to help us dig deeper into the text. And this week his article started out with, 
I'm grateful. He has a friend who every time he asks him, how are you? Right? Somebody asks you, how are you? Your normal response is, okay. Or, I'm good. Right? You don't really want to get into it if you're not, because you don't think that they really want to know how you are. But his friend, he asks his friend all the time, and his friend's answer to, how are you, is, I'm grateful. And why are you grateful? I'm grateful because missionaries would tell you after they come back from being in Africa or some other country other than ours to have a flushing toilet. I'm grateful to have a refrigerator to keep my food cold. I'm grateful to have an actual bed to sleep on. I'm grateful to have a roof over my head. Each and every one of us has so many things that we could be worried about and just give up over. But on the flip side of that, we all have so many things to be grateful for. And that's what Martin Luther said in his explanation of the first article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe that God has created me together with all that exists, that God has given me and still preserves my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my limbs and senses, reasons, and all mental facilities. In addition, God daily and abundantly provides shoes and clothing, food and drink, house and farm, spouse and children, fields, livestock, and all the property, along with all of the necessities and the shirt nourishments for this body and life. God protects me against all danger and shields and preserves me all from all evil. All this is done out of pure fatherly divine goodness and mercy without any merit of worthiness of my own at all. For all of this, I owe it to God to thank and praise and serve and obey him. It is my duty to praise and thank God for everything that he's done for me. So we all need to be grateful. So my challenge for us this week is when anyone asks you, how are you? To answer, I'm grateful. And some of you can't. And I get that. And I understand that. And if you can't answer that question that way, the rest of the people in this room will answer it that way for you. And the rest of the people in this room will pray for you until you can answer that question. Because sometimes life is just too hard. And we can't be grateful for the things that we have. Because we're so caught up in that mess of everything that's happening. But God has abundantly blessed us in so many ways. That at some point we will see those blessings. And His love will shine through you. So for those of you that can, and a lot of you did answer, when anyone asks you this week, how are you? You answer, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the abundant blessings that you're giving me. I'm grateful for the wonderful love that you shed on me. I'm grateful for the grace that you give me without merit. I'm grateful for the mercy that you showed to me, simply because I am your creation. And you love me. I'm grateful. Mm-hmm.